What is up guys and welcome back to another video. I'm very excited about this one because today I'll be showing you guys around one of my most recent BRR properties that I done in Doncaster. Now, it's a property that I secured for investor of ours and we carried out the entire refurb as we do with our in-house construction team on a guaranteed fixed timeline, time scale and budget. Now I'll be explaining the numbers at the end of the video and I'll also be explaining how I came across this property, how I got the property and what level of refurbishment works we actually did to achieve the end value. And I'll be also be explaining to you guys what potential challenges we did face throughout this entire refurb. And again, this is something that we do quite often as we've done well over 45 all documented. I thought what I'll be going to be trying to do is recording as much as possible for you guys. So without further ado, let's get into the video and hope you guys enjoy. So guys, coming into the property, the first thing that I would like to mention is that this property had brand new UPVC front composite door. Now, this is something that again when you guys are doing a refurbishment make sure you factor in does the property need new windows or new doors now in this instance it did not require new doors so something that we basically did was clean up the front door and we clean up the exterior of the property and i also want to mention this is a property that we've done in doncaster you guys can see previous things of it i guess some photos up in the front of the property as well basically the first thing that we also needed to do was fix the exterior of the property to make sure that it has the right curb appeal now what that basically meant was that we needed to fix the fascias of the property we need to fix some certain plastic piping around on the front of the property we should get some photos up and again we need to jet wash the front render of the property to ensure the property looked nice and presentable and again paint a few things out the front as well which i'll make sure to add photos of for you guys to fully understand now again when you guys are doing refurbishments make sure you understand that it's about the curb appeal it's about what the end user wants so at the end of the day somebody wants to rent the property somebody wants to buy the property if they come and see that you know work's been done but it's a little bit shoddy in certain places it will have an impact so do make sure which again i will be touching on further across this video this property required everything top to bottom brand new so i'll get a photo of what this room looked like here now so basically this property consisted of full central heating full electric external board insulation fully plastered all around so one thing that i want to mention is that all the refurbishments that my company actually does is we do the epcs up to a c now this is again something that I would 100% recommend for you guys to do so and again I'll explain exactly what are the steps to get that thing done or to get the EPC of the property up to a C. So first thing that you need to do is obviously once you secure the property you need to bring over a EPC draft assessor and now what they would do they'll basically give you a draft assessment for what the property would need to get the EPC up to a C. Now what I want to touch on again here is that this property has external board insulation now actually it's been rendered previously so i don't know if you can potentially see over here but the front of the property is incredibly thick now that render is actually foam insulation and is basically something that you know if the previous owner was a council tenant or you know they just generally had you know certain problems or basically the council decided to pay for the external board insulation on that property now again those are incredibly expensive and when the properties don't have it the option is is to do external boards on the inside of the properties and what i actually mean by that is the plasterboard that you'll be putting on the walls of the external again this is an external because outside of it is fresh air this wall here you will basically be requiring to have 50 mil insulation thick foam and again that's on the plasterboard itself and again that is something that the epc assessor wants to see at the end of the property once it's completed or they come in the middle of it or they want to see a photo of it being on the walls correctly now again this is something that we have a great relationship with our epc assessor guys and something that we've done multiple of so again it's something that once you do a few you can potentially pick up and take it from there so coming across now this property here we actually did put external board in the station although it wasn't needed just for the fact that we also wanted to make sure that all the pipe works that we're going to be putting around the property which for those of you who remember this is where the old central heating pipes used to go across so they were actually on the outside of the wall so again we've put them mostly on the inside of the walls and to do that and to give us an extra space we've used the external board insulation here to allow the you know the pipes to go into the foam there to basically make it all nice and seamless here now, going across again, this includes everything brand new, so new central heating, which includes obviously new radiators, new pipe works all around. These external walls that you see here, as mentioned, these are external board insulation. And again, on top of that is where all the plaster work has been carried out. Now, coming on to here, things like this chimney here, unnecessary to remove, unnecessary to touch and everything. Obviously, we kept the actual chimney itself. But what we did do on this specific property where a challenge that we did face was that the chimney actually had water coming down into it. So we had to cap off the chimney completely from the roof. So again, when we went up there on the roof, we completely blocked it off to prevent water ever coming into the chimney ever again. Now, 
something like this here that you see beautiful beautiful texture of the chimney that we've done now this is actually pvc cladding so again something like this doesn't cost a lot but just makes property look a lot a lot nicer and again completely painted white all over again which makes the property have that nice pop finish that's required coming across i do want to mention that this property here has obviously got all the ceilings plastered and you know basically to get the uplift for the property for this property in specific as well we had new frames as well and obviously that again comes with a new architrave skirting and doors and so on and so forth which i'll be explaining here now you might some of you may have spotted up here the um the smoke alarm now again this is an inter integrated smoke alarm system which is something that the investor for this property specific has asked for generally speaking when you guys are doing you know bro properties or any sort of properties in general you 100 need a smoke alarm that will be sourced out with gas engineer and everything coming off to sign that off however uh interlinked is not is not needed um you know you can just use this general battery powered one that sticks to the ceiling as long as it is on each one of the rooms that's necessary to be so but for this specific investor he wanted them to be interlinked and again, we thought, why not? We could add that in and sort those things out. So moving on to the kitchen, as you can see, everything looking lovely. I'll get a photo of the kitchen up previous and I'll be explaining to you guys exactly what we did here in the kitchen. Now, again, this is a kitchen where we've obviously had some space all around on the side to kind of decide how we want the angle of the kitchen to be done. Just to keep the original layout of the L shape of the kitchen. So again, now what that basically consists of is having the sink by the window where it originally was and having the rest of the kitchen carried out. Now, something that I definitely want to mention to you guys is that what you see here is actually called UPVC cladding. This is something that I would definitely recommend when doing a refurbishment. It's unnecessary to use tiles. It really is. If you're doing a refurb on a specific area or on a specific budget and it's an investment property, then you know places where something like this can be, you know, easily, easily doable and using UPVC cladding instead of tiles is something that you should definitely, definitely do. Now, it doesn't mean use UPVC cladding all around. You know, here, as you can see, this is proper, proper tile of the backsplash of the cooker. And again, this is something that is completely optional to do so, but it's something that we definitely do uh, consider when doing. Now, again, showing you guys around this kitchen, getting some photos of how it looked like before, what it basically consisted of was completely stripping it back to the original walls. And on these walls that you see here, these being external walls, we've put external wall insulations on for our own property. And again, we fitted the kitchen in completely as well. Now again, we've added extra sockets where need be because it's something that we obviously carry our new central heating and new electrics. And showing you guys around the property as well. Over here, I'll show you guys back here again, another radiator here for the central heating as well. Now, for those of you who also may remember, we had that um, original, basically, outbuilding outside, which we've removed. And again, that's something that, uh, again, we were carried out to do because it just wasn't necessary. You know, the outbuilding there might be easier to just remove it and get it disposed of than to try to utilize it. It wasn't necessary. It's quite a large property already as is. What you see here guys now is a boiler and this is a 10 year warranty boiler and again what this basically means is that this boiler that we've installed in the property being brand new having the 10 year warranty combi boiler it's got the flow as well above on the boiler as you can see there and another thing here that you see here which is the co2 monoxide meter which is necessary to do so on all the properties and it has its own again thermostat and everything moving on here to the bathroom as you can see, looking absolutely lovely. Now, for those of you who, again, remember this entire bathroom that you see back here, needed everything doing to it. Again, the entire property we've completed as a full refurbishment, as we always do. But I just want to basically explain to you guys that what you see on the walls here is actually UPVC cladding. Now, again, we haven't tiled the bathroom. We haven't, you know, basically spent a lot of money in terms of in the wrong way for this refurbishment. And what I've basically come to realize after doing so many BRR properties is that sometimes it's better to make the property better in terms of value that you spend on the property. It's just not necessary to spend tiles on the walls. It's so, it's just not worth it. You know, look how lovely all this looks. This all here is completely watertight. No matter how much water is on the property, water will just keep dripping. Same thing as you can see on the ceilings over here as well. The toilet with a soft close Toilet lid, as the investor has specifically asked for this specific one, is this something that is his second project with us? Now, the bathroom, I just want to also explain to you guys as well that an extractor fan is most definitely required, and that is a must for the bathroom. So make sure if you are doing a bathroom, you do fit the extractor fan 100%.
making our way upstairs throughout the property. So basically just walking back through the property, as you guys can see, everything needs to be done brand new. When you guys are buying a property, please, please, please don't buy a property and think of it as being a BRR property by only just putting in new carpets and painting the walls. As you can see, these walls here that you see are looking crispy smooth is because they've all been plastered over. Please don't just paint over wallpaper. Please don't just buy a property and think, yeah, it's a 15 grand quote. Somebody else is quoting me 20 grand. Although make sure that 20 grand is a proper legit quote and that 50 grand again is a proper legit quote. I'm not saying somebody's quoting you 15 and they're trying to rip you off when it's only a five grand job. Somebody's quoting you 20 and they're trying to rip you off when it's only a 15 grand job. What I'm basically trying to explain to you guys is that when you guys are spending you know, that 25, 30 grand on your refurbs, 20, 25, 30, make sure that it consists of brand new skirting boards, architraves, new electric, new central heating, fully plastered the entire property, and so on and so forth. These are exactly the types of refurbs that you need to do. This is what the lenders are looking for when you come to refinance. You're going to bring a lender in or evaluator in on the property and they see you've just painted over wallpapers and you've got the still all the electrics and all your pipe works are still sticking out of the property for your all central heating. That is not the way a refurbishment is carried out to uplift the property. They want to see proper works have been carried out significantly enough to increase the value of the property. Now, this is again is something that I want to mention is different to a flip. When flipping, you can get away with just pretty much painting over some things. But when you're keeping on the property for a BRR, please, please, please don't look over these things. Just plaster every single one of the walls. Take it from there, basically. But coming through, as you can see, completely plastered all around. I also want to mention that the upstairs loft here that you see here, we've had a 100 mil thick insulation up in the loft. Coming in, this is the first bedroom. I'm gonna get a photo of this one for you guys to remember how it looked like. Basically, this property needed a lot of work for those of you who remember. You know, all of these walls that you see here, there was a bunch of damp and all sorts of stripped them straight back to the brick, put external board installation on there and dot and dab and so on and so forth. Again, carried out the entire plaster works on the property, re-skimmed it, repainted it, and finished off the entire property from this angle of things. So nothing special from this side, apart from as you can see, new electrics and central heating as well. But I also wanna mention again, being the door frames all around, the architraves of the property, which are these things here, and the skirting boards of the properties as well, which is these ones here as well. Now again, brand new doors, door frames, door handles, these are something that's obviously expected, light switches, so on and so forth, when doing the entire refurb. Again, having new electrics, that means a brand new electrics EICR box as well. Coming into the second bedroom guys, for those of you who remember again, back here, this property needed a lot of work. So all of these walls completely stripped back and redone, replastered all around, central heating carried out throughout the entire property, all the pipes sorted through. Again, these walls are now completely EPCC, so the property is nice and firmly insulated. And again, all the electrics that we needed to do have been carried out with the proper EICL certificates. Make sure that when you guys are getting new electrics done, new central heating done, guys have the EICR certificates and building rate certificates sorted. So again, when doing a complete new electric installation, complete new uh, boiler installation and new central heating, you guys also need to be notifying building regs, which again is something that you guys definitely need to do and definitely need to take consideration of. Now, building regs obviously being notified to get on getting all the right certificates in place. This has been the third bedroom out back again. For those of you who remember, significant issues with damp previously on this property. So we've completely fixed out all the damp problems, all the gutters, all the fascias, bits of on the roof as well, which I'll basically be showing you guys. And what basically means is obviously we stripped it straight back to brick, fixed the problem that was causing the water to coming in through the walls, which in this case was the damp and the gutters and everything. So after all the gutters and everything were fixed, we blocked that all off, and made sure it was airtight, including the chimney. For those of you who again remember, there was water coming down through the chimney. And then again, external board installation from then on uh, forward and carried out the entire refurb. This property has now been actually rented. So on the 27th of December, we've had the tenants sign their agreement, which is actually a nurse coming up from London. That's why this property is empty now and I managed to get in to make a nice video for you guys. So again, as mentioned, this property is now being fully tenanted. We're on the refinancing stages throughout this property and I'll keep you guys updated with everything from top to bottom. But again, this property purchased for £80,000, refurbishment spent £33,000, refinancing with an end value of £145,000, just to make sure that we've got plenty space for us. 
And again, if we were to flip this property, multiple comparable sales very, very recently, in fact, have sold for above the £150,000 mark, looking nowhere near to this. Now, again, you may be wondering, you know, why are they saying for 150? What do I mean by refinancing for only around that 145 mark? But again, in terms of rental income that we're achieving for this property and the amount of money we want the bank to give to us, it doesn't make sense to borrow excessive amounts because obviously the rental income, it won't make the return as well as we want it to. Thank you very much for watching, guys. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comments and make sure you hit that subscribe button. I've got plenty of videos coming up got more videos of explaining previous projects that I've done, how I got them and what I did to process to get them. I've also got my brand new property that I'll be purchasing and pick up the keys for in this January 2024. So stay tuned for that one as I'll be starting my brand new project very, very soon. Take care now. Bye-bye.